everybody? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> Setting expectations. I just, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, what? what? I think I got that. Welcome Don't expect much the, out of Paul uh, tonight. So. Oh, that was. Oh, Joint yeah. Finance Committee workshop. Uh, another round of that for uh, uh, the 25th of September. So, welcome, everyone. Um, we didn't have the video last time, so uh, I'm going to refer everyone to minutes that we that we distributed. Um, but we're going to rely primarily on uh, videotape for this round, so we probably won't be uh, publishing, you know, formal minutes. If that's okay with everyone. Uh, and uh, if everyone, uh, maybe we we'll just go around and talk about a tent and you know, introduce yourselves. Uh, Paul Johnson, Town Council. Ruth Porter, Finance Director. Tom Hall, Town Manager. Kate Bolton, Business Manager for the Schools. April Sider, School Board. John Cucci, Town Council. And Don Hamill, Town Council. So welcome, everyone. Uh, we have as an uh, objective this evening to talk about uh, FY21 budget goal metrics. And uh, we've got other people joining. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry, not meeting Karen over. So while you're uh, getting seated, uh, we uh, we welcomed everybody, and uh, we're on videotape this evening, so we won't be doing formal minutes. Uh, everyone should have received a copy of the of the written minutes from the last time when we were having some video difficulties. So please refer to those. Uh, as you wish. Uh, we've got one agenda item this evening. We've got some handouts here. If, uh, if you like, and I want to thank the school folks for uh, their work on this and um, uh, giving it a lot of thought. And a lot Admittedly, of these were added to the website at the last minute, um, but they are on the website. So if you're watching this at home, you can go to the website and access um, the school documents are there if you want to open those and follow along. Those are up on the website. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Don, for relaying that for me. <laughs> um, Colette is quick on the draw, yes. let me just say. She moves quickly. Uh, so the, uh, the goal for this evening is to continue our discussions on um, the upcoming budget cycles, uh, goals, and metrics. Um, we talked about the minutes, but uh, we, I thought we'd just go, you know, get right into the discussion, of, you know, continuing discussion of the metrics. If uh, there are any other questions or suggestions for changes to to the agenda, the discussion this evening, uh, please feel free. We'll also make time for public comment uh, before we close. So. With that, whoever likes to go first, I know it says the town's going to go first, but I'd actually suggest we go second because we uh, don't have anything as formal uh, as you folks have done. That's fine. And some of our colleagues on the school department have some other commitments that they need to leave for. Oh, so uh, what's going the, first is actually great. What's the constraint then? Um, 6.15. Okay. Time. Okay. But if we could go first, that's great. Off you go. Okay. So what the school department has prepared for you and for the public is um, a brief kind of overview of our budget development process. Um, the portion at the top of page one uh, is really just an outline of our budget process. Um, and then below it, you'll find kind of a more descriptive narrative that walks you through the timeline. I'm obviously not going to go through the entire narrative, but just to give uh, town council members who are unaware of our budget development process, Typically, we start in December. Um, our work begins with our leadership council, um, working and looking back on last year's budget to reflect on you know, what worked and what didn't and what their needs are going to be for the upcoming year. Uh, we also have listen to learn sessions with our school staff, and the business office develops cost estimates um, for our existing personnel. So that's going back to our contract and trying to hammer out some of the exact figures for what we know we're going to owe our existing staff. Uh, in January, we do our leadership council uh, continues to have their work sessions, and we continue to have uh, listening sessions with the community. 
January and February, uh, individual meetings by phase and department. Which this is the time when Kate meets with each of our department heads and all of our building principals to go through the budget line by line to make sure that what they asked for in the previous year was an appropriate amount to decide whether or not it's something that we need to budget for in the future and to have those kind of reflective conversations so that we can analyze um, our budget by individual um, department and, and by line. Uh, in February, we continue our discussions. Similarly, March, this, this is an ongoing process for us. You know, this is not something that we meet with our leadership council one time. This is something that they spend months and months developing. And then, you know, in March, that's also the school board takes a more active role. Um, we have our big two-day uh, session with our entire leadership council, which I'm going to put in another plug for town council to try and be in attendance at that um, because it is such an informative session. It's long and it's a big time commitment, but in order to really thoroughly understand um, our portion of the budget book, you know, I know speaking for my colleagues on the school board, that that session really is invaluable for us um, in terms of understanding our portion of the budget and, and our ask. And then April, as we know, is public presentation and rollout um, of the budget proposal. Anyone have any questions or feedback? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Come on. I would Sorry. endorse your uh, all-day session. I've been doing it for years. Uh, there's very little uh, uh, other town council involvement, but it's a really first-hand way of learning about your budget. It's critical. Okay. So then. I had a question yeah. uh, on your. Uh, your timeline here, and I should know this, but what's the timing for first and second reading? Is it March, April in that order, or what's the? No, first reading is always the first business meeting of the month in April. Okay. Followed by second reading being, you know, two weeks later in at our first week. In May, usually. Mm -hmm. in May. I was going to say the first um, week in May. Yeah, Don, this is just a lead up to the first public presentation and first reading. Okay. So, the idea is to give folks who aren't, who are looking at the public part of the process and aren't involved in the, the preliminaries, an idea of what's going on behind the scenes before they see that first proposal. Great. It just uh, historically, <clears throat> first reading has occurred the night the budget was presented. There was some concern of that. So the last two years, council scheduled a special meeting, which has been, I think, the second Wednesday. So it's the in-between week. Uh, Expressly for first reading of the budget. Okay. And then second reading is always in the, I think it's the first business meeting. Maybe it's the second one in May. In May. Monday. But there's a long offset in between. That's when the, the thorough budget review occurs. Okay. So, I mean, we don't have to decide now, but at some point I want to make sure we get clarity not only on the steps, but also timing, because I recall from the last meeting that there, you know, we had a lot of discussion around making sure that uh, if there's a way to have uh, the timing uh, set so it's more convenient for you and I don't know where we stand from a you know from a regulation standpoint on that the flexibility we have but we want to try to accommodate the timing so it'll be easier for you to report on what you know when you know it instead of being out of, out of sync and having a hard I know we had a hard time with that last round uh, it may have been because we of the way the approvals went in the first reading, but I want to make sure that we really get that uh, set in a way that's agreeable to everybody. Well, I think one of the concerns was about absentee um, voting. Yeah. yeah. The school board is looking at policy on our end to make sure that our first reading and, and the amount of time that the school board is supposed to have the, the budget documents in our hands. Right now, they are not in sync, um, but that our, our policy is out of date, basically. Well, and I think um, Tom and I and Ruth some years ago sat with some, some folks from uh, Bernstein Shore because one of the issues is that you have school board policy, you have state statute around school budgets, which is a little murky, um, and then you have the town charter, mm -hmm. and we were trying to fold all of those things together and make sure that we were actually following the appropriate timelines to comply with all of those 
bosses, if you will. Right. And, and then there's the school budget vote, validation vote, which happens at a specific time. I don't know if we can change that if we need to or not, if that's set. We've traditionally lined that up with the uh, the primary election, mm -hmm. just right. because of Trying to consistent voter costs. turnout. Uh, there's nothing yeah. that requires it needs to be that day. We have had a separate validation vote in some years, but I think it's a it's a nice way to save some money to yeah, not run sure. two elections in the spring. And also, um, Tom's absolutely right, you get much better turnout if there's something else on the ballot uh, for folks to be in, interested in and invested in. So from my perspective, the, the things that really drive the timeline, you work backward. It's a fiscal year ending, uh, you know, starting in July 1st, so we, we need a new budget and we should devise a schedule that not as sure as that because of the voter validation requirement, but it sets us up to do that uh, within reason. Beyond that, your charter dictates in terms of uh, timing once the budget is presented by myself, how long the council has to act on it. And that's, as I recall, 60, 60 days. And so uh, once you factor those two together, um, the timeline that we've used over the last decade, I'll, I can speak to um, really is dictated by those factors. And really, ultimately, you know, you, I, it's been my experience that you're working on the budget and the presentation documents right up until the last five seconds before we Our get Our school it. colleagues, so it's not the last <laughs> thing we usually get is the school, which is uh, understandable because it's, I, I appreciate the effort to get to that point. Um, so we, we get it, and that, one of the last things we do is fold that in so we can actually see the complete picture. And that's a bit of a challenge because of the, the size and the impact the school budget has on the overall. We often, I don't know those, the final number until I see the, the final budget, um, probably a week before you all see it. Uh, and uh, Ruth's uh, tax rate comp sheets usually have not just the day, but the time on them because <laughs> she's they change that editing often. them up to the last second, as you said. So if, there is, if there's a timing thing that I would prefer, we, if we can get the school budget uh, a little sooner, uh, even a week sooner, would make a huge difference. But uh, yeah. I appreciate the challenges. That well, and, and one of the things that, that Sandy and I have talked about a little bit as he's come on board and started to review our practices and reflecting on what he's done in his prior district is just the, the nature of our budget book, which has become very complicated and long and beautiful and fantastic but also time consuming this amount of work. So um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, maybe we could reflect on what um, elements of that that we could have that are actually in the budget process and elements of that that we could maybe provide outside of the budget process. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're doing some thinking in that area um, because we do not want to the, the story to bog down the process. Yeah, there again, I, I would direct you to the charter. The charter is very clear in terms of what the budget must contain. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we certainly do that and then some beyond that yeah. uh, for presentation purposes and background, you've chosen to augment it with a lot of extra information. So not all is required, but it may still be appropriate. Yeah. Has that developed historically because of the difficulty with the budget? Is that yeah, exactly. It's it's developed because we felt as though the community didn't really have any good sense of why they needed to vote for resources for the schools. What exactly are we doing with the money? And um, you know, it it it's grown over time. It's an opportunity for the schools to kind of report out to the community and talk about the good work that's that's going on. But as I said, it's not maybe not necessary for all of that material to be linked to the budget document. It could be, you know auxiliary piece so that's the the part that we're talking about do but yeah it's a, it's a sales pitch or do we know how many people access that information is that something is that no, through the, the metrics off the, of the budget yeah. i mean people the read portal. it online yeah. sure it's just it would be interesting to know if that delay oh. and timing is impactful right if we're getting our bank for our back essentially right so is that something you, you uh, you would want to come back with a specific recommendation on at, at some date? I mean, I, we heard that a week earlier would be better. Uh, is there, and that's not something you have to decide tonight, but do you have a feeling of when you might know? Or um, Well, if I'm directed to produce a budget a week earlier, I'll produce a budget a week earlier. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like a, a handoff, but 
um, it would just be the the only requirement would be that there would be an understanding that maybe all the data wasn't 100%, but then it changes between first and second reading anyway, every year <coughs> always. So that's not a huge issue, I don't think, for the public. And then the second thing would just be that we wouldn't be able to present quite as much information or we might need to present it in a different way, which we're already thinking about. But so, for committing to that, I would love to for us mm -hmm. to be able to talk as our own committee and I sort of, that's agree. what I just wrote right. down, mm -hmm. confer with Sarah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can so, add that to our agenda to discuss as a school board committee, for sure. And just to be clear, that, that would be a favor to Ruth and Colette and me, and that's kind of the internal packaging and coming up with the final product. So uh, because we're still saying that we would do first reading in the, more or less the same time. Frame. Yeah, I, I, with the current charter constraints, I don't see that changing much at all. Exactly. I really don't. Uh, you know, Ruth, I think Kate would agree. We would prefer actually pr uh, presenting a budget later in the year because the data is better. The later you go, the more. Uh, more weeks now. matter. I mean, uh, oftentimes yeah. two weeks after the budget's released, the health insurance numbers are in, and, and so. Yeah. But yeah. then you're running up against the end of the fiscal year and needing to leave time for the validation that, vote. So it, room in there. there's really not much time to push it uh, and, and to be thoughtful about it. Well, and one of the things that we're talking about on the school side is is having documentation available earlier for our finance committee and for our board because the board needs to vote on something. And it does get a little muddy that first week because typically what we've done is we've done the full presentation, school board, town council, everybody in the room together, the superintendent and the town manager giving a presentation and then the board and the council are having a vote after that. So this last year, it worked well. I think the school board voted the next day, and they'd already had their budget workshop, so they had a sense of what they were voting on in first reading. And then the council voted a week later after they'd had a chance to absorb some of the material. So that part, I thought, was, was worked pretty well. Yeah. We, I mean, we've talked as, as a finance committee with Kate in, the pa in this past cycle, just the challenge of being tasked with understanding and knowing the budget better than anybody else as the finance committee, but we're seeing it at the same time as the rest of the board. And so that's, you know, there's like a weird dynamic there happening where, you know, all year we've been working on this, but we're not seeing the final draft until the same, until the same time that the rest of the board is seeing it. And so the finance committee had to actually ask Kate if we could have it a day early. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, you're not the only ones who would like to have it one like day. Two you, whole we days had two early. whole extra days yeah. this time, Kate, and we were very <laughs> grateful. Tom, when do you get your other department budgets, the initial cuts, or the library? Uh, I, uh, I'm I trying to look time. here. Uh, it's typically the end of Late February is the deadline I give to department heads, and then I have the month of March, if you will, to put it all together and meet back with them, and that's typically adequate. I need four or five weeks uh, to put it out by first week of April. Now, granted, my, my senior staff and I, you know, we're communicating all the way along, so I'm not seeing their budget request for the first time, but that's, I do have to have a hard deadline or I'd be chasing it all the time. It might be something for both the respective communication committees to look at at the last year's budget book and see if there's any efficiencies that we could come up with to save some staff time, more eyes on it to see if there's... Well, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm thinking the balance is really important because I wouldn't necessarily want to go back to the days of just what's in the charter, which is sure, a line item right, budget correct, with a summary on the right, top and... Right. You know, just it's, numbers. It's mm. just numbers and jargon yeah. and, you know, labels right. for account right. numbers and... We've got 700 accounts in our in our budget, and that gets a little boring. Yeah. Um, and that's all in there, right. but I but feel you guys like also have like a chapter in each department. Right. We have story. we've added right. the context, right. and <laughs> and what happens it's when you give everybody yeah. <laughs> when you no. gather, when you give everyone that little chapter to write, then it, right. they sort of get bigger, right. and right. things get cool things get thrown right. in, and pretty soon people it's, are wordsmithing it. It's taking five people to write a paragraph, and pretty soon right. it's 150 pages because there's so much cool stuff. No, it so, might yeah, be worth there's, the, there's room the respective committees to room see to where the room there. is. Yeah. Or at least give some input. Yeah, if there could be some like identification of what it gives the most value yeah, and even how to in that, that document and how do we measure who's reading it and what they're getting out of it. Please recall, Larissa did a series of focus groups mm -hmm. with some, we'll call them super users, folks that have really shown interest in the budget document in the past. And 
came up with a light, medium, and heavy budget, if you will. Yeah. And uh, that was fairly well received. Uh, I think. I think the heavy, heavy was about a hundred page. Yeah. Pages yeah. shorter than the previous year. Right. Yeah. As well. Yeah, and you're right. Even that was pared back a bit. So we're trying to really focus on what what people think is important. I know that took a lot of work, and I know it's very well received. Not everybody's a super user. I say that. The folks that have shown great interest in the document throughout you know, the years. Moving on. So uh, at our previous school board finance committee meeting, dedicated our time mostly to uh, talking about goal setting, talking about what a net budget goal, that was our takeaway from our previous joint finance committee meeting was to go back and, and take a look at what a net budget goal for the school department would look like. So if you look at the second page of the handout we brought, um, there are some, there are, it's always important to, to say what we know and what we don't know. And so what we know is that we are going to be on the minimum receiver um, line for the state subsidy this year. Um, Janet Mills has passed a legislature that will, will, that will increase that amount from 45% to 50% for FY20 of our special education costs from two years ago, three years ago. It'll be the final cost from 19. So two years. 421. Okay. So, yeah. so, so two it is two years span. Um, so, you know, in terms of doing our calculations and trying to figure out what our uh, expenditures for next year are going to look like, we, we know how much we can expect in, re in the form of state revenue, roughly. Um, and so what we did was we looked at our 10-year budget history in terms of expenses, revenue, subsidy, use of fund balance, net budget, and tax rate. Um, and when we looked at the 10-year picture, which we did not include here, when, when we looked at the 10-year picture, what we realized is there's quite a bit of instability in those first five years of that 10-year picture. We had significant loss of state funding, we had a recession, we had significant staff uh, reductions, and then a rebuilding of those staff positions. And so when we incorporated that data into our calculations, it, it threw our numbers off in a significant way. And so what we decided to do was use a five-year projection um, to make sure that we we're all speaking the same language or an attempt to speak the same language. Um, in order to come up with our projection, um, I suggested that we use the same formula that the town council has approved for calculating your um, organic growth. And it has come to my attention that that formula is falling under scrutiny. And so, of course, I just use it and then I'm told, oh, huh. oh this joke's on you. Okay. So There's no official it's, scrutiny. It's, it's essentially, it's, it's the geometric mean. And so what we're looking at is rather than taking an average of the five years, which would compare to FY21 back to FY15, what we're looking at is our year over year over year average in increase in our net budget. And so when we do that, what we arrive at is a geometric mean um, of 5.61%. So what we need to discuss is, is there, is there a different way to do this calculation? You know, are we in agreement that this seems like a reasonable way to predict our growth? Um, I think it's fair to say from the school department side, the last thing we want to do is present a net budget goal that is, on a, you know, that is unattainable to us. And so what we're, you know, our conversation at our committee level really centered around presenting a number that's going to ensure that we can pay our local services um, costs, which there's some discussion always about what exactly is level services. And I will reiterate that it is not just taking last year's budget and adding everything we have now. Um, you know, we do go through line by line and make sure that what's in there now is something that we're going to want for next year's budget. Um, but again, we can calculate our staff costs um, to some extent. There's always retirements for people who decide to leave the district. And those factors all kind of create a fair amount of uncertainty when it comes to our level services budget. And we don't always have those answers until March or April. 
um, then we have required services. And if you look at the chart on the bottom, um, we've tracked our required investments over the last five years. And as you can see, last year we had $629,000 in required services. This is not a number that we can predict or forecast. Um, it's a matter of students moving into the district who have a certain level of need. It's when students need out of district placement. It's waivers and things like that. Uh, it's additional students within the district who need, uh, who require ed techs. And so it's the hiring of positions like that. And in order to accommodate our required investments this year, we had to spend $629,000 right out of the gate. Um, and then if you look, one thing we wanted to highlight, you know, 97.6% of our budget is this level services category. Whereas 1.2% last year was required investments. And then we have our last category, which we call other investments. Um, these are the small incremental um, investments in our school that we believe are in the best interest of our students that, you know, make us responsible stewards of this budget to make sure that our kids have what they need and that we are staying with the times and advancing our curriculum appropriately. Um, and this year we spent $508,000 and six, 586 um, on, you know, new investments. Things like um, uh, bringing in our career pathways, making that a full-time position at the high school, bringing in a full-time STEM teacher at the high school. Those were some of the you know, new investments that we made for this year. A big chunk of that also this year is the enrollment at K-2. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. About 300,000 yes. of that that's was right. adding teachers. That's right. At so K -2. it's not always investments we want to make to enhance our curriculum. Sometimes it's investments we need to make to keep our class sizes at a reasonable level. Right. So we um, distinguish for growth. Distinguish between required because you could say, well, you know, there's going to be 24 K kids in your class and that's fine. That meets state statute. And then what we actually feel is appropriate for the size of a kindergarten class. That's a great point, Kate. So just for, for this past year, what, recall for me, what are some of the required investments that we made at 629? Um, most of that is in special services, out okay, district right. placement, tuition, yeah. and um, added staff. There's eight new ed techs, nine new ed techs. Nine new ed techs, I believe. And that's and, in that 620. And a couple of teachers. And a couple of them are at the at the K2 level. Yes. So oh. it sort of mirrored the pattern that we were seeing in enrollment growth overall um, uh, with some kids up with significant needs coming in at that K2 level. Kate, I, I didn't ask you this at our um, finance meeting, but I recollect hearing that the incoming needs um, have been greater and really that's reflected in that required investment um, increase and I'm just wondering if that impacts the um, or should impact our estimate using the geometric mean if, if that continues with that trend should we be considering that and making an upward adjustment for that um, it's a it's a very good point April and I talked about that when we were looking at the numbers the other day to put them in the chart and and yeah if you look at that required investments line in the middle of the chart um, you'll definitely see the past three years a little bit of a boom there um, in those required services and we don't really have a lot of evidence to indicate that that's going to slow down um, but uh, I wouldn't be able necessarily to put a number to it. You know, we could we could probably calculate that difference and maybe add a tenth of a percent, hundredth of a percent um, to account for it. I would expect that many of the required investments this year will become folded into level services next year. No, yeah, not, not we, one for one, but I suspect the bulk of those will end up being, you know, part of your cost going forward. That would absolutely be be the case. I would just think if we were faced with the same level of growth and change next year as we had this year, sure. then we'd have to address that. So I think that's so, what Alicia's getting at. I, I think you make a good point about growth. And when I think about school budgets or, or forecasting school budgets, I usually think about cost per student. And if you bring your historical expenditures on level to today's employment costs um, and inflation levels and then look at that in relation to the number of students that you've had and then predict how much how many students you think you're going to have the following year that's it, 
a little more traditional way to account for some of those things. Mm -hmm. And then you're explicitly contemplating your growth. And you can see if it happened or not. And honestly, if you have 300 extra students next year, you're probably going to blow your budget. Well, we are aware. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and interestingly, John, I, I don't know um, how long you've been looking at this stuff, but back in the olden days, we actually used to prepare two levels of budget. And one was the budget that we needed to accommodate what we had going on now. And then the second one was sort of budget part B that was really addressing enrollment. Uh, and back in those days, we were in one of those booms, and then we went into a decline, and now we're booming again. So it's, it's possible, and we talked about it last year, to kind of segregate out what are the impacts of that growth over and above what you're used to seeing um, you know, to maintain uh, the status quo or to maintain a normal progression. But I like the idea of looking at per-pupil expenses. Is there anything we in the, both wrote it down. <laughs> at the state level that has the definition of someone who's requiring special services broadened, or is it stayed the same? Because it with a last year with the nine new ed techs, I mean, how normal is that going to be? Or if, like is there something at a policy level that made more people qualify for that? Or is that just the way that last year turned out? It's early intervention. Yeah. Um the way things turned out. Yeah. 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 I it's think coming into the school. Yeah. The only place where there's a lot of changes in, in federal law is, is in 504s, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is not necessarily special education, but sure. it's accommodations for folks um, on the medical side. And we've definitely had a boom in that area, but I think that um, the growth in, in those required services is more just demographic. Okay, so it is really specific, the demographic of the town. Better diagnosis, some of the speculated the yeah. opioid crisis effect. may have some effect. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there's any evidence of, of that, but and that and as you said, early interventions where you know people are recognizing sooner, right? Um, that, and that trend's going to continue. That a obviously. child may have um, an intervention that could be effective mm -hmm. before they even come to us. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, something that's decided by like the uh, the counselors or the medical people that determine whether they need that, or is that done by the special services staff? Most of our students um, that are receiving special services come to us through CDS, Child Development Services, which is a state agency. Um, so in a lot of cases, they've already been receiving services through the state um, in their pre-K years, um, although there are always students who we're show up that, during the year that we've never by our special services staff. never seen them before, and, and we're just learning about them. Is there any sense for how... Uh, this boom uh, that we are seeing here, uh, is, is it affecting other, other municipalities, you know, nearby school districts? Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a statewide, yeah. Uh, yeah. a statewide trend at the moment. Now, do you expect that to be a front loading of the expense? So you'll spend more at the earlier stages of development and then maybe see some savings as they get into middle school or high school or we're well, not sure yet. That would be great. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Early intervention. Hopefully, you get to the point where the students can be independent in regular classrooms. Um, it's not yeah, always the case, but I think the spotlight is on. Show that if you can put your services to kids early on, they'll pay off down the road. But I, but I mean, the needs are really different now than what they Absolutely. have been historically. So that I mean, I think it's still to be determined. Yeah, right. Much more complicated situations now than ever, ever before. In my district that I was in Wyndham, we had 16 new special ed positions that we had to put in for this year. And it's just unheard of. Wow. I know. So it is it is all over. It's just not here. It's much so the boom we're talking about is in the special services demand. Um, I want to be clear on that because uh, you know, when you say growth, people are thinking new housing starts and new you know, in-migration. Uh, what we know from some analysis we did in the incoming kindergarten class, and I think we could expand it to others if we wished, but uh, the majority of those new students were actually uh, coming from turnover of existing housing stock. They, they weren't new houses or rental units. So I, if we're, I just want to be mindful that we can do some better analysis and understand where those students are coming from, where the demand is coming. It's not all new starts. It'd be interesting to see also if there would be some sort of uh, 
you know, business cycle effect with that. If things do <coughs> do cool down in the housing market, would that mean that there might be uh, less of a turnover and, and there, therefore less of a you know, pressure? Uh, yeah, I mean, there was a spike in births five, five years ago and yeah. another one coming next year. And then it, it tapered back down a little. Uh, one thing I was going to say, I just, you know, talking about what you have to work with, you know, I'm looking, you know, 2.8% that you really uh, you know, don't define as level services, you know, that's, uh, and I know we complain about two thirds or three quarters of, uh, of cost being you know, people related. I mean, this is a, even a smaller percentage that you have that you have to work with. And I'm also struck by, you know, everyone talked about the boom last year, you know, what happens if that continues, but each of the prior years was way lower than that, That's right? Great. One. 1.1%, 0.7%, 1.3, 0.91%. I mean, like two to three times less of an increase each year than what we saw this year in in how your non-level services costs go. So, yes, yeah, a tough one to work with. One of the, one of the challenges we face when we sit down as a leadership team and try to figure out priorities is that there are so many things that are already settled. You know, there's very little sort of room for discretionary spending. There's very little room for um, putting new things on the table and advancing the district. Um, and you can see that from the numbers here. I think it would be helpful if uh, there's consistency, consistency. And I think there generally has been on the school side in terms of this level services uh, conversation and then investments. Um, and it looks like you're maybe for the first time starting to really um, uh, define what that is because I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's always been measured the same way every year. And I just think it might be helpful to use a consistent talking points and the, uh, and the items underneath each of those is consistent year over year. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, we have tried to keep the labels the same, but I think there's been a lack of good communication about what they mean. And, um, you know, the level services, those words were uh, coined by George back um, when mm -hmm. he first started building a budget because he was trying to make that distinction between, okay, here's what we're doing now. And yes, there are lots of things that are moving, but we want to keep doing those things and providing those services. And then here's the other stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think to the extent that the, the public can understand what we mean when we say these things, it'll, it'll certainly benefit us. Yeah. Communications committees. Well, we have, I mean, we had that conversation right when the finance committee began meeting after the first of the year last year. We, we altered required investments. Right. We changed that label right. because some of us have concerns about what that, what the implication of that label was. Right. So, we tried to hone in and tighten up that definition. And, and that, and I agree with you, you know, being consistent and, and keeping those labels clear and concise and so that everyone is having the same conversation is really critical. Well, what it does, I think, um, and you did a really good job last year, it really focuses on the, the, new, the new needs and, and the, uh, they're certainly not discretionary, but it focuses the conversation on those change agents in your budget as opposed to all of everything else that you largely don't have control over. Okay, so this is, you know, this, like I said, when I started, this is really our starting off point. Um, and part of our goal as a, as a school finance committee, when we come to these joint discussions, you know, it's not to open ourselves up to scrutiny and feel like we're bringing this to you guys to have you you know, weigh in and tell us what you like and what you don't like, but rather that we all kind of view this as the more people who have this, the more eyes on this, the more thoughtful conversation we have centered around these topics, the better they become. You know, the stronger these predictions become, the, the more comfortable we all feel with, you know, creating these kind of um, projections. And so I fully understand, and it was not our uh, ex uh, our expectation that everyone would be able to process this in real time today and then, you know, provide us feedback. And so I'm very comfortable now having presented this to you. I'm, I'm happy to field questions if there are additional questions, but I'm also okay if we just kind of leave this where it is for now. And, you know, we, we 
open it up, you know, next time, you know, with it. But I, that being said, before we leave today, I would like to have a directive for the next joint meeting. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, thanks very much for the summary there, and I uh, like your positioning. Uh, uh, it's, it's a lot to chew on and a lot yep. to digest, so letting it, giving us a chance to have it sink in is great. Uh, I also want to thank the, uh, uh, the school team uh, and the finance department, particularly to for you know, you take the goal when you exceed, right? You kind of not only talked about what you would like to see as a goal, you know, you, you named the name, but you also came up with a number. So uh, I can't promise this, you know, early discounts for your reporting early or setting number early, but but you have a point of view. You know, you, you've done detailed work and you have a point of view at the trajectory and at least. So one question I did have though is that I, I recall from this past year and maybe I was training from prior years, but it does seem to me that we're the timing effect is such that we kind of back into the school number or that the town adjusts the municipal number to accommodate the school number. Now maybe my it's not the right choice of words, but I had that feeling this past year and in and, and prior years that, that and then what also makes it tougher is that we get the bigger, you know, the bigger part of the pie, uh, trying to figure out, you know, how we make a whole pie with the smaller slice of the pie. So I, I don't know why. Analogies. <laughs> analogies. So, so I would, I would pass those comments along to Tom. Yeah, um, I think though. Because we just, we, once we so have our, our budget developed, we just give it to you. So whatever portion of the yeah. overall budget, and that's kind of why we, that was my frustration with the, you know, with the mill rate goal was, you know, to some extent, the school portion is what it is, and we're going to give it over to you. And what that equals when all the pie gets put on the plate together is... I think yeah. there's more than a whole pie next. <laughs> no, I think what you're probably referring to is this uh, so-called one town, one budget. So if there's an overall goal, we have different inputs into that. Uh, the town has, I'll say, more discretion and flexibility from a revenue point of view. And also, we're not under the level of mandate in terms of what we do and how we do it. Um, so, in years past, we have often assisted in um, meeting that overall goal. So, if I can interject a bit, as I understood the exercise we're doing today is, I, I felt like because we've had the last couple of meetings, we've batted around different approaches and nothing caught traction. So, I felt like we, when we had left, we said that could solve some of those issues if, if the school board had a net budget goal percent that we would socialize and then get all then people get on board with a three percent tax rate and then the net budget goal i think that the point of kind of doing this exercise is are we willing to take that three percent mill rate goal and expand that to one more number which would be what does that look what do we think that looks like using predictions as a net net budget percentage goal and we do a high low or we do you right know, so i guess i guess my thought of coming out of this is is, is the question, is this digestible? And is, is this a good way to set a sub goal? Yep. And so my initial impression is I, I like this as a way to complement the 3%. It makes the school board feel like they're not shooting in the dark, so to speak, because that's one of the big frictions here. And and if you're somebody who's following the school budget more than you follow the municipal budget, you have something to work with and not just the 3%. It helps the town side too. I mean, right. I think that it gives us another variable. And we got, right. you know, we, we got a. Uh, so if I'm understanding the objective of why we're doing yes. this, yep. which I think I am, I think this was a great exercise to go through. And obviously, we're not making a decision tonight. But to me, it makes perfect sense. And maybe, and I, will, I have a rubric. And John's, I want to, if we have time to look at what John had forwarded, that actually came from your wife, I believe. But as far as I, I think a realistic possibility for us would be 3% overall mill rate. Oh, by the way, that's what the net budget is for the school. Mm -hmm. Because I think there was confusion. I mean, people just said three percent. They said it's going to be three percent all around, all along. It hasn't been, you know, uh, for cool. years, and uh, we shouldn't have been surprised by that. We just didn't really condition people. You know, I had the same reaction. You know, and I'm fairly close to it. So I remember. We do remember. <laughs> <laughs> they don't forget anything, Doc. <laughs> I think I missed that that part. Was that this is what you guys are actually looking for for guidance 
for your portion of the budget is a, a five and a half percent increase. And I, I think that's the target that you're starting with, I guess. Or am I misinterpreting that? Well, this is this year's budget. You don't have a projection on here, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You do. Fiscal so year is 20. Well, oh, we oh you're going the, with that guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. If we were to My set apologies. The, yeah. I didn't know that if, this was this the, was your the one you're kind of throwing out for fun. No, we were yeah. no, we okay. were saying if our reasoning is sound and everyone around the table, I just put FY twenty one. I just put a blank column. I made it. <laughs> with a frowning face. Well, there's a smiley face. Right? <laughs> so I think you buried the lead. Yeah. I mean, I, the, if, the highlight, the yeah, magenta right. color if, looks takes your eye right yeah. there. Yes. But. If the reasoning is sound, as April said, right. okay, all then right. We should I'm be sorry, able I to use a five point six one percent to drive to a three percent tax. Okay, so what you're suggesting is obviously this is not set in stone, but 5.6. Here's one our month. reasoning, that and might be this, is our number. this is our number. Okay. Although I want to add that if the projected increase in special services continues to follow that trend, there may be an additional. Oh, increase. absolutely. And, and, I think yeah, and we other sure increases, obviously. What we didn't want to do, for lack of a better term, we didn't want to come with a fudge factor. We didn't yeah, want to come yeah. with some artificial, you know, we. we you guys can, you have the numbers in front of you. There was no good way to say that our special services number is all over the place. And so therefore we can't really predict it for next year. Okay. And but then, Alicia, your there question is a potential a that we're going to need a fudge yeah. factor. We just didn't know how, we didn't have a good way to calculate it. Yep. And I like to come to the table yep. with a sound reasoning for the numbers I'm going to present. And so rather than just throw out a half a percent or, you right. know, point four, like, that's yeah, why I wrote my uh, precursor email today. <laughs> so I think all things being equal, this is what we would expect to see. Correct. If right. when the town council sure. comes up with uh, right. overall guidance and the, the town's mill rate needs to stay flat or decrease or go up 10%, it might move. Or, or what we would expect from the schools might move. Has, has the council had any conversations about the whole net budget versus tax rate? Thing. No, I mean, I think that's, oh, we're trying to get out ahead of that. So we had a very rushed conversation this year. So this is precisely why we're here today is to say, can we do this early with the understanding that, I mean, clearly the number, numbers might change. And one of those factors, well, there's a thousand factors. So you have your special services. We have our organic growth. There's all sorts of fun things that factor into this. Can I ask a rebound question? So the FY19 figure obviously was before the rebound, but the the FY20 number. Reval will have no effect yeah, on those no numbers. Yeah, that's right. yeah. No, they'll have no effect on those numbers. It, it will have an effect on tax rate. Yeah. Yeah. Year over year. Right. So, so I, and we had, and we had tabulated that, and then same thing. Like, we, we looked at it, and because of the, when you factor in the reval, which obviously it drove down the tax rate, then those numbers didn't look authentic to me in terms of trying to sure. come up with a mean or an average. So we actually mixed that yeah. you know, table because it just it, it didn't mean anything. The things we have control over are the right. expenditures yeah. and you know to some extent the revenues and what, what the net budget is going to look like. But I just want to be clear. So by adding further clarity, I think it does help this conversation and understanding and expectations among those around this table. I'm not sure what it does for uh, the public. In fact, I think it potentially is another number that could confuse, and it's a bigger number, which, so I, I'm well, just I think, flagging that, that yeah. we'd be careful, not careful, but thoughtful how we message this. I think, I, mean, I, I think I'd push back on that pretty strong, and I'm gonna throw you on the bus one more time, so I apologize, but if we look back at what happened this year, there was two counselors that the first comments are, well, you didn't meet your goal, and Tom did, and then, and, and that that right there sets. Uh, I mean, if that's set in public, and that's not. I'm not throwing these people. I don't know. I don't know who these people. Are. I don't know who those people are either. <laughs> you were one. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah, and, and, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we, that was actually followed up with a forecaster article that also mm -hmm. made it seem like that we were, we were way off the goal yeah, when of we six percent when we actually weren't. So I actually think that it takes bite out of. Those those types of uh, from the from the podium to the to the press, it at least gets people setting appropriate expectations. And so I would push back on that. I actually think that it would it would be for those of us that are following the budget process. I think it would be incredibly helpful. 
I, I think it's a simpler measure. It doesn't require uh, calculation or uh, you know translation. Like right. 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 it's a two-step process to get to the number. We lose people at the first yeah. step. I mean, yeah. uh, even the folks that know, know how to get there. And wasn't that one of the things their goals was to try to mm -hmm. use more than one metric yeah. mm -hmm. to make the determination? Yeah. Right. For the well, I was asked to put together a 10-year average, which was oh, sent out in the package. Um, since uh, we saw the school advanced a five-year time frame, uh, Ruth stirred around and prepared the five-year. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, so we, ch we chose to include you know, town, school, county, and then uh, information at the bottom of tax rate, commitment, and valuation, just for kind of conversation purposes. So if you look at the top uh, for the town, um, we're showing a five-year average, what you call a geometric mean, um, a net budget of 2.43%. That's to be compared for the 10-year average, it was at 2.59, just for comparative purposes. Um, I will admit, though, as I look at FY16, it showed a net change of 0.7%. Um, and then again in 18, it shows 0.03, almost no change in that budget. Um, those are clearly dragging that down. And I, I, I guess I just reserve the right to, I, it's not top of mind as to why that was, but that's irregular to me. So I just yeah. would ask that we understand what those dynamics were um, for fear that it would be unreasonable to set a goal that, uh, that we can't meet. So, I mean, is that just because we, is that because we had more organic growth than was expected? So no, no. it's not property tax revenue. The, probably excise. Yeah, revenue change. Probably excise revenue. Uh, perhaps homestead exemption. Uh, you know, we can okay. probably determine that pretty That's quickly. I, but okay. um, I assure you, it could be the joint sharing of services between from from the town's portion to the school allocations. Mm -hmm. And the top line budget is the is the gross. So if you look at those percentages, um, it wasn't necessarily that we spent less. Uh, sure. it's, something's happening on the non-property tax revenue side, yeah. and it's okay. just not yeah. coming okay. to me what that is. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that might be cool to mention at this point is that both Ruth and I have been looking at the general fund operating budget. We haven't been folding in other funds, special funds, right. capital budget. Um, just you know, talking about the big piece of. Paul's pie. Yeah. Don's pie. Yeah, Don's, Don's pie. Right. The pie. I'm not owning that. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest piece of the pie. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think for conversation purposes, if, if you wanted to have the town held to a same sort of metric, uh, you know, I would be suggesting in the 2.5 range, just to take into account some anomalies there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's certainly confirmed by the 10 year average. Do you folks know anything about um, where revenue sharing is going on the state side? It was uh, kind of nice yesterday, last year. As I recall, it's going up again in the second year yeah, of the biennium. I remember yeah. there was a there was talk of it being increased over the two year period. Mm -hmm. So that that certainly was nice. So I I don't know if that is something you would entertain that there would be a similar net budget goal on the town side. But this is just data to help yeah. 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 shape that conversation. And the county is what it is. Right. <laughs> and we don't have any Whatever they tell you. Although they, they do have a budget committee, and any of you can sit on that if you wish. <laughs> if we need another uh, committee. So have we talked in the past about uh, uh, the increases year to year and being roughly approximated with CPI or inflation rate or other factors. Did we ever, I re recall hearing some discussion about that, uh, looking at how we had performed multi year with the mill rate. Um, is that, does that enter into the discussion at all? I think the 3% on, on the mill rate, uh, my recollection, CPI and kind of the annual you know, inflationary growth. Uh, was a factor in coming up with that number. That's how I, I recall. I think, I think we should be mindful for both the school and the town in a growth community like Scarborough, no one should be surprised that it costs us more to do 
uh, next year what we're doing today. Um, because of inflation, obviously, even if no one else came in, but then you add in the extra uh, demands on service. And so I, I don't think we, we necessarily react like everyone else because of that phenomenon. And we just have to be mindful of that. I mean, we've looked at CPI before. I mean, if you look at it historically for the last 150 years, 2.8, 2.7, 2.8, 2.89. Uh, and you have some periods where it's 15 <laughs> crazy years and other years where it's one. Uh, and, and so three sort of revolved from that discussion, in part also that we're a new town in that this building's new, Wentworth's new, high school's new. All, we, we don't have 100,000 in debt for, not, for no reason. We have it because we've grown dramatically over the last 40 years, and we've had to accommodate all this growth with new structures. And so the, the debt is understandable why it is. Uh, historical CPI uh, is uh, near three. We've been around as a group, school and town working together, around two and a half to three for the six years I've been doing this. So I've, I've thought this was a rather successful initiative. And yeah. there's so much the school cannot control, which is why I'm very sympathetic to your circumstances. Because <clears throat> you get people walking in the door uh, who you have to serve. You have no, and it could be an expensive service. So uh, I've, I've thought the 3% served us well. And just to add to that, it, something that Bill pointed out was that the gross budget for the town and the school went up 4.15% for the school, 4.33%. That's the average. They're pretty consistent. And then if you divide that by what your growth is, about 1% a year, that's where you, you can come back to the 3% number. Right. I think that's a simple way to think about it. When you're talking about the net budget, there's a lot of moving parts there um, because you can finance some things or you can shift things around. It's a... It's a trickier number to manage to or to understand, I think. Yeah, but wouldn't it be an opportunity now to, we, going back to this last budget cycle, <laughs> and I said this a few times, but in an effort to get to that net, net, net budget, we ended up bonding so much, correct? So if we were willing to take that 2.43 and I perhaps have an early realistic conversation of that being 2.6 because we're not going to do that this year, working with these net bu budget percentages would allow us to prepare for that um, when, in an effort to get to that 3% number, the net budget gets disrespected, so to speak, and nobody actually looks at it because we're just trying to get to a 3% number, right? So we bond at the last minute, we bond an extra $2 million or one point mm -hmm. something million dollars, and we took all our fiscal responsibility of saving for future equipment and threw it out the window as well. So, yeah, down the so to me, I mean, I would much rather take a net budget percentage, increase it, or at least discuss, have a realistic conversation about it, so then we can we can prepare for the future and not end up bonding X amount of money at the end to get to the three percent. Uh, so that to me would be an advantage of the net budget percentage. Can I ask a question? Um, because I don't understand it. The, so when Kate prepared for estimate, she used the geometric means, uh, and then Tom used the five-year average. Does it? I think they're if, one and the same. the same. Are they the same yeah. equation? Yeah, yeah. I thought that yours was sort of the incremental change. Oh, you changed it. We did, yeah. We went back and took a look at that, and we did an incremental change at first, and then we said, mm -hmm. okay, so that's not really helpful because we need the year over year. We're using the same, We're using the same yes. methodology okay. now. The average of the year over year change. Right. The average, of the, year person. The average of the year over year change. So, okay. So the only thing I think that may be missing is, uh, you know, looking under the hood here to see you know, what's really happening, you know, whether it's level services or whether, you know, use Tom's words, uh, you know, it, it's providing services to accommodate growth and development. Um, you know, really pressure testing things like our asset base and what's really essential versus stuff we just let like, move along. And I, I, without really looking at it and really seeing where this is being done, then, you know, I, I uh, tend not to be a believer because I think that 
organizations that have had that natural tendency to, to grow, you know, and not to really test real needs, kind of accept staff levels uh, and spending levels and build on those. So I, but one thing these numbers don't do, and maybe this is something the process will do for us, and, and you describe a very robust one in terms of how you roll it up, but I, I think there's gotta be some line of sight into that, and I don't know that it's a metric, but it's gotta be some, somewhere in the process. And I think that in the past several years, we've really kind of done that on a spot basis and have not really been maybe as rigorous as we as we could be. I know schools have a lot less flexibility than, you know, other parts of, you know, running a parking lot or things like that, you know, cleaning the beach. Yeah, in the town, we've, we've got some discretion. There's a, a lot of discretionary spending. We don't have to clean our beach. We could be slower in our response to plow snow. Uh, we could... Um, and those are choices we make. Those aren't mandates on us. Um, you could eliminate trash pickup. Pick up. I was going to say. Salt. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's laughs> I'm not done. Ashley Spores. Correct. The school that we get it right. I know we're not. We don't make jokes. I think one of the things that we've yeah, tried. We can joke. You guys can. No, I mean, no. Yeah. Not about the town of Iron Man joke about the Ashley Spores. <laughs> the usual suspects. Um, one of, one of the things that we did try in years past, um, but again, it's it's a communication question. Like, is it really resonating with people? Are they understanding? Is is to talk about a word we use is reallocations, where, for example, you have someone who's retiring, and you take a look at the program that they're doing and what role they're playing, and you say, oh wow, cool, this is an opportunity for us to go in a different direction. So instead of just replacing that person or that program, we're gonna go in a different direction. And we might not have a smaller budget as a result, but we might have a more agile and effective and appropriate budget because we're reallocating those resources. So that's a piece that we've tried to articulate in a few different ways, and I'm not sure how well it's come across, but maybe we could get some help with that because I'm sure the town does that as well. You know, we're not going in this direction anymore. We're not gonna use this software, but we're gonna use this one. The cost may actually be flat, but you're getting better bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. We've done that a couple times. Mm -hmm. We've, yeah, we've we've sort of, you know, labeled it out and said, you know, this is this is the in our investments chart with all the color blocks last year. We said, here's what level services would look like, and then here are all the reductions that we're making because we're changing things up, and people are, you know, we have veteran teachers who are going to retire and we're likely to replace them with someone who's further down on the salary table, just simple stuff like that. Or we're changing a program or we're replacing it with something less expensive. Um, so we've tried to capture that, but it's hard to get the word out to say it's not just status quo plus. And I think that's what you're speaking to, Don, is that sense that it's just, you know, do what you do and then add some stuff. I still, I, I think you do that, and I remember hearing that along the way. The thing I would say is I just really think we need to be energetic about that and really uh, on both sides of the house and also uh, things that we tend to, well, we, no one's ever made money on school lunches. Well, you know, we're using the same provider for cafeteria that the CAPE is using, and CAPE's finding a way to reduce their costs somehow. So... Well, they withdrew from the federal program and so did we. Well, whatever it may be. We're trying. I mean, we're no, the, the example you use, just for clarity, <clears throat> the example you use, you know, the reason CAPE was making, was turning a profit and Falmouth is turning a profit on their cap, their cafeteria sales is because they withdrew from the mm -hmm. federal program. Um, and so this year, you know, we voted as a board in June to withdraw, for, or in May, to withdraw from the federal program at the high school and we will do a workshop with the, Great. you know, October, yeah. so, and we have the same nutritional this. director that yeah. Kate that has, has who so has designed that program. So right. I think so. You're already there. So I mean, then it's great. I have to go to the housing alliance meeting down the hall. So sorry, because this is important. And Paul is right. We did uh, run away from bond uh, to, uh, appropriations to bonds uh, and some reserve fund payments. Uh, Maybe, and I would have been ready in the budget discussion that night to put some of that back mm -hmm. and accept the fact that the artificial nature of 3.0 right, right. uh, should not be so respected 
that it keeps us from making good decisions like the reserve fund right. issue or the appropriation right. set of audit. Totally agree. So, like, uh, why not 3.2 and do something responsible? Yeah, that was that was how I walked away from it that night, and I think we learned yeah. a little something. So <coughs> don't be wed to uh, wed to it. Uh, good, it was a good discussion. One thing that might help for just to keep an eye for the future for the presentations. I mean, perhaps perhaps the what did you call them that you just talked about? Oh, reallocation. Yeah, so some reallocation. I mean, maybe just a I mean, maybe board, make that a, right. Make that a a part one. of the presentation. I mean, I because that is absolutely. And when I went to the, I mean, I learned some things when I went to the budget uh, roadshow, whatever we called those. Budget roadshow. I like <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like antiques roadshow. The first baking way show. Than... I forgot what it was, but <laughs> we'll come back to pies. Yeah, I will sell his pies at the budget roadshow. <laughs> Budget outreach <laughs> session. Hey, extra revenue idea right there. Uh, <laughs> Don Amble Pies. The, uh, um, they're very good. Oh, <laughs> the sugar on. <laughs> Better for you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it, maybe it would be great to actually have that as part of the official presentation. That is, that uh, to Don's point, it would be nice to, to highlight that and spotlight it to say, hey, the, you know, we aren't just a perfect example, Kate. We're not just saying just what it is plus all the time. We, right. we actually did X, Y, and Z. Those are things that kind of get overlooked in the pretty book and all that sort yeah, of Yeah, like if you take a look at that second. Yeah, no, I remember those. Right, right. right. Remember those. So it's a question of how do we get that out yep. there. And, yep. you know, it's, this was good. it's our huge yeah. story all the time. It's like it's so freaking complicated. How do we get people to understand the big pieces and what are the pieces that resonate? I was wondering, um, John, to your point earlier, um, if we have any movement in, in terms of looking to the community for what services they want. Schools kind of have like rules about what they have to provide, but like Tom said, towns don't necessarily have to. Yeah, we've talked about uh, some sort of survey instrument to, to begin to understand what value residents put to certain services. So when we have to make a cut or want to make a cut, we have a sense of where to go. Without that input, it's really hard to it pick really and choose. Yeah. I, can I we, can picture town councilors years ago sitting up with the in the big chair saying, just tell us what you don't want folks yeah. you know weigh in on what it is that you don't want or don't need in this town we'll be happy not to pay for it for you yeah and we have a small ten thousand yep. dollar line item in the budget for communication committee to get some things from to, yeah it's just been it's kind of fallen fallen uh behind on other priorities but we have identified some resources at usm uh, in fact melissa mm -hmm. had a petita uh, to come for future meetings Nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it would just help us understand where the values are in the community. And if we are looking to you know, shrink things in order to afford other things, then we ought to be making those decisions based on what the community really wants, really needs. I just had a quick question for Sandy. Do you notice any differences between the process that we go through here in Scarborough versus the uh, window where you were before? Uh, yeah, well, the difference is, um, RSU and give. We're not really working with the council on a day-to-day -day basis as far as building a budget. Um, and you basically try to communicate to the whole community what you're asking for. This is much more collaborative. However, I've been in this situation before because Wyndham used to just be a one district, and so it was much more collaborative with the uh, council. Um, so I think it's healthy. I mean, we're all in the same community trying to do the best for adults and students and the people who live here. And I think the more we can model that we're working together to get to the end result, I think we'll be better off to be. So I'm not sure that answers it, but really, as an RSU, you're really not a department of the town. You're a separate entity. Um, so it's pros and cons with it. Is it almost like being the county to some degree? Where it... I guess you could say that. It's, yeah, I mean, in my world, superintendents would say you, you no longer have to have the mother mayor. You, know, you had a little speculation. How do you become an RSU? Like yeah. role? <laughs> we we still, are you still need voter support, yeah. though. You still need yes. validation. Yeah. 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 One point I'd like to go back to, I think, Alicia, you brought it up, and I think you've done some great work here to kind of get on the same page. So there's mutual expectations, no surprises. Um, there was an expectation as to when or we should talk about when when should the goal be met. Yeah, right. Good point. That's it. And I think that that is this. 
I think traditionally the source of some consternation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'm not suggesting we need to hammer that out tonight, but I think that's part of the conversation. I think we should wait up here. I agree. I would you took feel strongly about yep. it. Yep. I was just going to say, I think probably the person on the finance committee who feels strongly about that is not here. I feel very strongly about it as well in the opposite direction. And so without my counterpart here, it feels like an unbalanced conversation. Yep. Great. I guess I want to add that. So the, the question is whether you hit the goal at first read or first second reading. First reading versus second reading. Okay. I mean, but we're not sharing that. <laughs> you can share if you, you want to. I, I mean, to me, your goal, you end with your goal. So that's the objective. Um, how you get there is kind of up for discussion. You have such an early start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that's really genuine. You could come up with an interim start. Okay? A first read goal, a second read goal. But that might complicate it. Um, we were going to talk movement for a second, or yeah. would we kind of I mean, we had some feedback on it. Uh, well, I, I think I dismissed everybody from their homework, didn't I? I the rubric? You did. I did it. Did, did, did you? <laughs> we did it too, but then we couldn't find it. Yeah. So. Tom, I'll get you a sticker later. <laughs> <laughs> we did all the work and then we couldn't find it. Can we share them? Oh. Can I let my <laughs> Well, I think this uh, this is an interesting exercise, but I think th is this being replaced with what we're now talking about? Different, different I, way I, you know, that's a good question. I think, uh, I, I don't want to speak for the chair, but I feel like the conversation had evolved that the rubric's probably a little too much for goal setting. I felt like at the end of the last meeting, we were all kind of getting on the board with everything we're doing here. So the rubric kind of said, okay, let's. Well, one let's thing I really, on one thing I really like about the rubric is I think it, I think it's a tool for having an enhanced conversation Correct, right. once we have a budget, yep. but it doesn't help us get to a budget mm -hmm. that we all feel good about necessarily. Yep. It's too vague or you know, it's too subjective. Yep. But if we're going to have and make sure that we're all having the same conversation once the budget does roll out, I think having a rubric is a great idea because then we can say, here's you know, line item one. You know, did we meet the needs of the school to create the budget? You know, did we meet the needs of... I mean, look at the interest it's already generating between these I, two. They I already think they're <laughs> answers. See, it's they're, a genius they're, idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I do think that the, the value added is that you want to make it a broader discussion, right? right? Yeah. You want to make that the budget isn't a success because we do one thing. The budget mm -hmm. is, yeah. a, is a success because we do all of these things. I think it's a helpful degree. exercise for this group. Yes, um, right, right. Because I think you did some things exceedingly well last year, but I think we did horrible right. on some others yeah. and right. uh, that sort of introspective yeah. uh, look I think is healthy and I, I mean I don't I walked away from our final joint actually I walked away from our town council and school board joint meeting when there was about 15 16 of us around I didn't feel like that was a very good use of time I felt like it was a little tense and or maybe it was when you guys presented your budget to us Gotta give me some. Yeah, it might have been our first. No, we were, here, we, we were, were around here. this okay, table. I was gonna say, were we in it was at night time. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> it was before a town council meeting. I did guess my point tie, was, I felt like the. Yeah, all right, this conversation was very stifled. Yeah. Right. That's all I was. I was getting. Yeah. Right. Well, so. one, and and we've said one of the goals of joint finance all along is so that when we bring forward our budget to right. that night. We're all prepared to have a similar conversation. It was the night that you guys presented the budget to us. And we don't okay. feel like we're now shuffling this off to you. And, and right. you know. Well, I think that at my perspective, that was that we thought we had come to a common understanding of what we were doing. Yeah. And that understanding was different. And so I think that that, from my perspective. Oh, I'm not talking about first reading. Oh, what are you talking I'm talking about when, you, when the budget was rolled out for the first time. Sarah, it, it, Sarah talked essentially presented your your budget to us mm -hmm. so you guys were the side we're on the side mm -hmm. and it was you know some of the, so we had some things floating around so we had the hr director we had um the, the stem direct yeah, stem, stem we teacher. had the career pathways yeah. there were a couple things that the scoreboard there was things that everybody kind of knew should have been discussed a little bit more yeah. and nobody wanted to discuss them because we didn't want to go through that for some reason. Well, so I, I think that from, again, yeah. from my perspective, I think that there was a, the dynamic about 
us advocating for expenditures right. and getting into the weeds with that when really, you know, that that's not the role of, of town council in, in um, right. providing the money to the schools. And so that seemed like an unnatural conversation and it felt like there should have been a better way to have that. Right. And I don't know what that is. No, I but, agree. But, but that, that uh, morphed into if you open your mouth, you're being a bad guy. It, yeah. it, and that wasn't, I'm not saying that was anybody's, that was just, you know, if we're going to raise our hand on $68.8 million, we should we should be able to ask whatever questions we want yeah. to. Just I don't like, think it's ever stopped you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you guys are on the video, <laughs> um, so I, that's all. That was my experience. I was trying to draw. Like, why? How do we actually have those conversations earlier? Or like, and because I think that'd we be can. a really good point when Bill mentioned about coming to the presentations that are yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's when you learn that kind of right. stuff because all the um, administration is there presenting what the what has been reallocated, why these positions are needed, and it gets you to understand yes. the whole budget. So yeah. it doesn't seem like it's a line item that right. you're pulling out of the budget and want to discuss it. Right. There's, the, there's no substitution that. for that. Though. No, we, we need yeah. to make an effort as a council yeah. to, get, to get bodies at those days. Yeah. I mean, there's it, that's on us to get yeah, people. We're stone there. cold hearing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. We, it's we, it's, it's really a, a very informative when you, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think the board has found yes. No. Wow. Somebody just has to write me a permission slip to miss school. Sandy. Um, I think we're at uh, a break point here, a breaking point. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, we, we usually run the public comment by this point, so if there's no public comment. Um, any, any other comments or questions? Uh, we'll, we'll circulate a note to get ideas for what to cover next time in terms of an agenda item, but it seems like we may be in a position in good shape in the next month or so to come forward with some kind of specific recommendation you know, about uh, what the metrics should be, and, uh, you know, to get in front of the council. And I, I don't know what that process would be in terms of uh, uh, you know, sort of that. But, but it would be nice if we could do this before we get into, you know, November, December. You know, I, I didn't hear what you said. Sorry, I was, we're, I was talking about rolling up, coming, coming forward if we feel we may be in a position to make a, a joint recommendation. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, John, do you have an opinion on probably after the election? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I, I think you got to give the, the new members, yeah. if there are new members, an so opportunity to yeah. yeah. and, and, yeah. and committees may change, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, I mean, are we in a place, Don, that you want to have our next meeting after the election? Uh, I don't know. I mean, okay. I, my feeling is if we're close to having work ready to hand off, I'd almost be ready to do that before the election. And then, you know, they can say they like it or they don't. But at least we don't. I think what happens after the election and then we get the, the committees get reconfigured, we're starting, we go back, we're going to start over. Well, why don't, we, my bias. why don't we reach out to the candidates and invite, why don't we try to do one specifically before the election and have the candidates sit with us? Great. That, or you come up with your recommendation and then it's on the shelf and then it gets right. presented to the new council or the new school board uh, at after the election. Heard, yeah, right? yeah. So I think it's, if it's in the context of the recommendation, it, it, it has some weight. I mean, yeah. yes, the That's fair. other group can do something different, but I think having it as a formal recommendation after hours of discussion, I think has some value. It'd be nice to have an output. I know a lot of people- It's a starting point. Okay. Time to yeah. I, and you I wouldn't want to lose that trip. That's true. Right. Right. Yeah. And so I think from a school board perspective, since we did bring all of this to you guys today to look at, and I'm sure that you'll go home and, and think about it some more, you know, um, I think we should have one more before I, I would like to have one more meeting before I made it, before I brought this Fine. to the board. Fine. Before, you know, and so can we put on the agenda that we're going to vote on a recommendation for the next meeting? Is that what we're saying? The school board doesn't typically vote in committee. Um, well, I mean, take but, consensus but, but, on a recommendation. Yeah, same same thing yeah. here would be some sort of advisory. Yeah. yeah, no vote, just that. Meeting. Just so you know, you're at 5.54% for the school and you're at 5.61%. So you guys are pretty close right now. Huh. Net budget increase. Five years. I want to reverse. I'm careful. I worry. Two point four three. Different than what we talked about. It. John, what what number you what is that number you just said? So the change from prior year, the yeah. FY twenty on the school yeah. side is five point five four percent, and then Tom's school um, net budget 
five-year average percent change is 5.61 percent. So, right. so the actual between 19 and 20 was 5.54, but the five-year the geometric mean geometric mean was 5.61. Hey. Trying to use. So, so I think what we've got here is that I think the recommendation would be on the metrics and not on the number because we still we can't circumvent the process if we're safe with the number. You know, making that, that's you know. Wait a minute. Why do we wait a minute? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can we go back? Sorry, John. I feel Can like we go back? that's what John's referencing. John, what are you referencing? Sorry, maybe. Yeah, I'm confused too. I was looking at the five-year average from. Uh, Tom and Ruth's yep. uh, yeah. for the school side of the net budget. So he's that 5.61% 5. 5. all the way to the right. And yep. I was comparing that to your FY20 percent change from prior year, 5.54%. That I had interpreted you as proposing for next year. No, they're no, proposing I'm at 5.61. Sorry, sorry, if you look down and, and oh, 5. lesson 6. learned. Ah, so you're lesson identical. Learned. Then. Exactly, okay. we're identical. Lesson John, learned. that's exactly varied, the thing I just did. Right? We buried our. Our big ta-da <laughs> by accident. Okay. So, it looks so like a this is, Yes, so it does. So it's even better than I thought. It does. So, okay. So I'm glad we cleared that up before we right. Lesson learned there. Everyone's <laughs> math checks. I'm pretty sure John had that feedback last year. So long I'm time. writing ta-da yes. next to <laughs> our big ta-da. We buried our big ta-da. What, what, what was the net budget increase for the, for the town the last year? Was, yeah. It was under five, right? 4.86, was it? Four, yes, four, it was. Yep, 4.86. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so everything matches. Yeah. Right. We, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, so we're, we're saying that yeah. the next meeting will achieve consensus on a goal to then present going forward. Recommend going forward. Alicia's concern, um, which she said quietly, you're welcome to speak for yourself. I don't need to speak for you. <laughs> um, was that if you guys do have feedback on our, um, either our process or our numbers or whatever it is, we won't have had an opportunity to take that feedback back to just our, like at our committee level before we make a recommendation. Um, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Is, I if, I mean, with that. if you agree with us, we may be able to have consensus. But I mean, <laughs> well, I mean if, you know, if, if there's something back else to, to, to you know, discuss or consider or, or research, yeah. then I don't know that next time we will. I mean, and I'm, I'm not saying that will to be obstinate, but I mean, we would have to you know, have further discussions about I, that. I think, I guess I'm, when I think we're making a recommendation, it's really more about the, the way we're going to split the goal, so to speak. Or not split, keep with the 3%. So, you know, if, I don't think it's appropriate for us to beat you up over the 5.61. <coughs> okay. we're, we're not anywhere close to, I mean, that's just, nobody's informed enough to even discuss that, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and we still have a process we're going to follow. Yeah. Right. Even if we have to refine all those right. things. Yeah. But you can start the process in a multitude of ways. This way makes as much sense to me as an arbitrary number coming out of the council. You Correct. guys coming forward with right. this is what we think is going to make sense. Doesn't mean it's going to end that way. But, right. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a next meeting on the books? Uh, no. What we typically do is we give you our third uh, Wednesday of the month meeting. And then we bump up the the town finance committee meeting by a week. So we might try to do that next. But I'll, I'll look back to Tom and what. And when you make when you come to that oh, recommendation, it's more than just a three percent tax rate increase. We're going to have some multiple. Unless it all gets shot down, we go with three percent. Well, you know yeah. what I mean. But the, the the different metrics rather than just the one. I don't know. You know, I I think we've got to get clear on. Uh, the metrics, and then how far we can go with the numbers, I don't know. We might have uh, a desire, but what we really need to do in terms of, you know, how much more of the year do we need to see financials to know what our trajectory is like? I mean, I'd, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't really know what our authority is. We're, we're a workshop that's advisory, so it'd have to go in front of the council, and, and you can get a potentially a leadership change in November. Yeah, I mean, and a bunch of counselors that haven't had a chance to yeah, right, absorb yeah, this. Yeah, right. yeah. So, I mean, I, I can tell you from a personal level, I'm just going to be trying to push to keep with a three percent with a sub goal for that the gets the school board. Like that's what I'm going and angling for. And right, and I think the school the department is happy to have a goal that we feel like we can at least calculate. And I'm not willing to like <laughs> well, talk shut about down it before you come out of the gate. The goal. I, I think we'll, we'll have a consensus. Right, and maybe. 
Peter says, no, let's keep the 3%, maybe we yeah. fight about that. I mean, we don't plan. even have both, yeah. both yeah. full plans. We do not have our chair. Yeah, so, so we're, right. we're uh, yep. a, a great meeting. Thanks very much, everybody. Yep. Uh, great. I think we'll just wrap then at uh, the county hour. So, thank you. Thank you, Don. Thanks, Thanks Don. Thank you. No, I'm just I'm curious to know something's different in those years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.